Hello everybody, welcome to Low Modules Made Simple and Comprehensive. I am Negri Kozer. I would like to welcome you guys to the second semester of 2020. If this is your first time in here, please click on that red text written subscribe and also that bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever there's a new video in the house. Subscribing saves us from losing the link and it doesn't cost any money at all, so we have nothing to lose but more to gain. Today, I would like us to look at citizenship, public participation, and democracy, CPD 1501. Let us go to our 101 tutorial later and see what they have in store for us. Um, our first assignment is, is the multiple choice. Um, I think that I will just cover up the first assignment and second assignment as well because they have the very same due date. So, um, yeah, it's just going to save us time, some time, you know. And in the first assignment, I don't have to explain. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to do both assignments right here. Okay, um... Do not forget to, um, okay, here yeah, you don't write any unique number or anything. It is uh, just multiple choice questions. You just tick on my UNISA and all that. Okay, um, question one. It says, um, select the correct answer. The National Legislative Authority, as vested in the Parliament, confers on the National Assembly power to... The answer is four, and that is found. Okay, <laughs> the answer is four. Practice both powers in A and B, um, which is um, it, it is not even A and B. It is one and two, which is um, amend the constitution, pass legislation with regard to any matter, and that is found on page seventy five of our study guide. Let us quickly go there. Okay, there we are going to read at um, A. The National Legislative Authority as vested in Parliament confers on the National Assembly the power to amend the Constitution, which is number one on our tutorial letter, and two, to pass legislation with regard to any matter including a matter within a functional area listed in Schedule 4, and so on. Okay, um, there we have our answers right there, which is number 1 and 2. Okay, yeah, I think our answer ends here. Yes, that's it. Okay, guys, um... Let us quickly go to the next question. The concept of democracy recognizes the answer is three, which is that the right to vote via the process of elections is the most fundamental aspect of representative democracy. That is found on page 48 of our study guide. Let us run to that page. Okay, um, here is um, the answer there on that box. Um, I have already highlighted it. Um, the concept of democracy recognizes the form of government by the people through elective representatives. That is what our text sorry sorry <laughs> that is what our study guide is saying so um number three says um the concept of democracy recognizes that the right to vote via the process of elections is the most fundamental aspect of representative democracy so our answer is number three the third question constitutionalism means the answer is three, having either procedural or substantive limitations on the power of a government. Let us go to the very same page on our study guide, which is page 48. 
there we have it um the definition of constitution constitutionalism up there on the first um <laughs> box yeah I don't know what to say. Okay. Um, this is the idea that government derives its powers from the constitution and that these are limited in terms of the provisions of the constitution. Um, yeah. Our question says, constitutionalism means, so I chose three because um, it gives out um the definition that the same explanation as it is given on the text oh, man. yeah it is a textbook whatever um so um what am i saying yeah i'm saying exactly that that um this um the question here no not the question Number three, on our tutorial letter 101, gives out the same definition as it is given on this um, study guide here. Yeah, on that um, first row there, up there. The fourth question, a period of residence or ordinary residence includes, the answer is, one any period any period which an applicant has been employed outside the republic and the service of the government of the republic or on a ship or aircraft or a public means of transport registered or licensed in and operating from the republic okay um this is found on page 12 of our study guide let us get to it okay um on page 12 of our study guide, um, I'm just going to read out the bold letters down here. Where my error is, guys. Where my cursor is, it's not the error. The cursor. Yeah. Yeah. This is our answer right here. It says, um, a period of residence or ordinary residence includes any period during which an applicant has been employed outside the republic in the service of the government of the republic or on a ship or aircraft or a public means of transport registered or licensed in and operating from the republic exactly as it is on the tutorial letter 101 so we pass the fifth question deprivation of citizenship in the case of children takes place when the answer is one the parents of children under the age of 18 and born outside the republic cease to be south african citizens by voluntarily obtaining citizenship of another country without requesting the retention of south african citizenship as a result of deprivation this is found on page 18 of our study guide let's go there our question says deprivation of citizenship in the case of children takes place when the answer is one but um i'm just going to read out which is written here on the study guide so that you can be able to see that uh, it is one and the same thing it says here where i have already highlighted children under the age of 18 and born outside the republic can be deprived of other citizenship of their parents here yeah? uh -uh. If their parents have ceased to be South African citizens by voluntarily obtaining citizenship of another country without requesting the retention of South African citizenship or as a result of deprivation. Okay, um, that is the last question of our first assignment. So right now I am jumping to the... Um, second assignment the um second assignment reads as the question says 
Okay, here on the first assignment, please do not forget to write the unique number and also um, include your, your, your student number as well. And you need to reference your source of information where you found the answers that you have written. Um, if you have made further research, you need to cite those sorry you need to cite those um sources and if you have only um used your study guide you need to also cite it um show that um you have written um no show that you have got your answers from the only study guide for cpd 1501 unisa yeah that's the one Okay, um, our question says, um, okay, and also include the declaration form, honesty form, guys. It is very vital. But if you forget, you forget, but I'm reminding you right now. Okay, um, briefly discuss the principle of separation of powers with regard to the division of state authority between the branches of government. In your answer. You should also discuss the distribution of state authority among the branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial authorities. Um, first, firstly, here we need to find out what does what are the separation of powers. What the like? What's that? What is separation of powers all about? Um, here is the um, definition of, um, separation of powers right there on our first row. It says, um, according to this principle, the state powers should be divided among several organs to prevent authoritarian rule and protect human rights. The legislative, executive, and judiciary have their own powers and function. So, um, we need to find out what are the functions of these three different authorities. So, um, I'm just going to read out what is written here on page 56. It says here... The principle of separation of powers. You must always bear in mind that South Africa, in addition to being a representative democracy, is a constitutional democracy. This means that people's representative in parliament, in the provincial legislatures, and in municipal councils are not free to make whatever laws they wish as they are bound by the norms and values embodied in the constitution. This is the case because the constitution is the supreme law of the country and any law that is inconsistent with it, it will be declared invalid. Guys, just um, open your study guide and read what I have just written with an understanding. Our constitution also provides for the principle of separation of powers. The doctrine of separation of powers entails the trias political principles, which refers to the division of governmental power into three branches of activities, being the legislative, executive, and judiciary. It further says, each of these terms is explained below. The legislature is empowered to create, amend, and repeal legal rules. These powers are vested in Parliament. The executive is empowered to execute and enforce legal rules. These powers are vested in the President. The judiciary is empowered to interpret legal rules and to apply such rules to concrete situations. These powers are vested 
in the court that is just straightforward guys i don't know if you need any explanation or whatever but that's just it those are the functions that we were looking for earlier um i'm just going to read out that follow that that box at the bottom there the separation of powers or trier's political doctrine is a term of art a word of phrase or phrase that has special meaning in a particular context and refers only to the decision of state authority between the legislature, executive, and judiciary. I'm going to continue with it and go further down with it. But guys, um, you just need to write everything that is written here, but you do not, you do not have to necessarily just copy and paste everything you just have to summarize it in your own weight but just do not write five lines or something just try to summarize it try to explain as you understand it you know what i'm saying um just try to to broaden everything up in your own ways you know um I'm not going to leave anything. I'm going to um, read everything because these are our answers. These are our answers. The separation of powers, uh, trias, political doctrine, can mean any or all the following: the formal division of state authority among the legislative, executive, and judiciary, as represented visually in Figure five point one. The separation of personnel so that one person should not perform in more than one branch of government at the same time. A separation of functions so that one branch of government cannot... Eh, eh, oh, I don't even know how to read that word. You sap the functions and powers of another. Um... I think, um, okay, good. Let me just continue. Checks and balance with each branch of government given powers to restrain the other branches and thus to achieve the desired balance among the three components of authority. Briefly, the principle of separation of powers represents the separation of powers between the legislature the executive and the judiciary with appropriate checks and balance to ensure accountability responsiveness and openness okay um i am not going to read where it says expert whatever because um you're going to read it yourself i want us to look at this how they answered it the activity says briefly discuss the separation of powers doctrine or trias politica in south africa the feedback on activity it says trias politica or the separation of powers is used to divide the state uh, the state authority between the legislative executive and judicial authority the separation of powers is very necessary in order for a democracy to function effectively it prevents abuse of power by one branch of government from political freedom sorry for political freedom in a country there must be separation of powers i'm sure that right now you understand everything very clearly just try to Put everything in your own words. Do not ignore anything. Um, read out everything with an explanation. Sorry, <laughs> with an understanding, so that you can be able to interpret everything and be able to write everything in your own words. You know, um, yeah. This is all, guys. I am begging you to please open up your books, study very well. Um, you're not doing it for any other person. You're doing it for yourself. Um, I am very excited because um, today the results are out. 
um, many have passed, many have failed. So, um, it's all up to us, you know, guys. Um, most of my, 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 they're not my friends or something, but I usually call them my babies. Most of my babies, the people that I usually communicate with me, people that, um, ask me questions, you know, um, when they don't understand, they simply ask for my assistance and all that. I can see that, okay, this person, um, they don't rely on me for everything. They try to open up their books and when they don't understand something, they come to me, I explain and all that. Um, most of them have got distinctions in most of the modules that I have helped them with. So guys, um, it is not a miracle. It just happened because of their hard work. So please guys, I urge you to please work very hard. Open those books of yours. I always say this on my, on my videos. If you don't open those books, you are not going to know what's inside it. I, I am not writing out these assignments for you because I am clever or something. How would I know where the answer is if I don't open the study guide? I know where the answer is because I open the study guide. I read. I give myself time. So please, guys, just do the same. There's no miracle here. There's no whatever. If you don't open your books, nothing is going to come out. So please, guys, just uh, dedicate. Dedicate yourself. With determination, everything is possible. So if you have failed, come back. We don't change modules. Sorry, we don't change um, courses. We don't give up. We come back, fight harder, study harder, seek information, seek help, do whatever that it takes for you to um, complete that qualification. Be it a diploma, be it an LLB, be it a higher certificate. Just work hard, guys. Without any hard work, nothing is going to come out of anything so please guys um continue working hard from me to you it's um goodbye